Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and happy Friday. <laughs> okay, so today's video took a little turn. Um, to, I, we're going to talk about, we're, well today we're going to talk about my top 10 uh, woven top patterns. This is, um, I started to do a series of these videos, gosh maybe last summer, and then other stuff happened, and I was like, I need to get back onto those because there were other categories I wanted to do. So I've already done my top 10, my top 10 current knit tops and my top 10 current uh, knit dresses, and I will pop um, links up to those videos up here so that you can go watch those if you'd like. Again, I did those last summer. They're still, you know, pretty relevant. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about my top 10 current woven top patterns because that does change as new patterns get released or as I discover new patterns or whatever. These are my top 10 current woven top patterns. But before we get into that, today's video was going to be a wonderful sew the look that <laughs> in my head was going to be just perfection and hopefully it still will be that. So today's, and it was gonna correspond with the Feature Friday for today, and it was just gonna be great, but that didn't happen because my fabric did not show up. So um, today's Love Notions Feature Friday pattern, um, which means it is $5 today only, and today is Friday, March 25th, 2022. <laughs> so today only, the Metro Blazer is on sale for $5. It's the first time that this pattern has been um, on the Feature Friday because this was a new pattern just last year. And it is a knit blazer pattern with a couple of different views, got little welt pockets. And I'm going to make one <laughs> and an ivory ponte. And I've had it ordered, um, ordered it from Minerva, and I was just convinced. In fact, as I'm filming this, I'm filming this on Thursday, you're watching it on Friday, it's probably going to arrive today. Because typically when I place an um, order from Minerva, if I placed a large order, a lot of times they'll come in separate packages, um, I think probably for customs reasons. And usually when they do that, it'll be like, you know, on, you know, Monday, for instance, the first package arrives, and then Tuesday the second, and then, you know, that, I usually get one like each day. Um, so that's what happened this week. I got a package on... Monday and on Tuesday and thought for sure <laughs> of course I've got everything I've got all the fabric I've ordered except I'm missing one package that has two pieces of fabric in it um, and one of those is the Ponte and it's just not here yet and I wasn't able to get it made so I will have a sew the look with ivory blazers um, with the Metra being my ivory blazer um, sometime here in the, in the real soon future. So if you're interested <laughs> in creating your own Metra blazer with me when I do that sew the look, I would grab that pattern today because it's five dollars today only. Um, anyway, so I had to reroute. I waited as long as I could thinking, okay, it's a knit blazer. I can get this whipped up quick if that fabric just arrives and it just didn't. So It'll get made. I will do a Sew the Look video with it. It just won't be today. <laughs> okay, so on that note, that is giving us the opportunity though to do the uh, ten, my top 10 woven patterns. Okay, let's, before we dig into this, now these are, this is kind of my criteria for picking my top 10 woven top patterns. Um, number one, I noticed that I do wear a lot more knit tops than I wear woven tops. And that's, I think just, that's probably true for most people. Um, I mean, knit tops are just easier to throw on, maybe? I'm not sure really why that is. I know that as a large busted person, I've lived most of my life in knit tops as opposed to woven tops for fitting issues when it came to ready to wear. But since sewing, um, I wear a lot more woven tops than I used to. Um, so maybe it's just like falling back into my old habits. I don't know. <laughs> but I'd say it's probably like a 70-30 split in my closet. You know, 70% knit tops, 30% woven tops. Um, anyway, so that was one thing that I noticed in my closet. So I also wanted to make sure I was picking patterns that these are tops that I have worn that I keep grabbing. I keep coming back to um, time and time again. So I didn't include um, patterns that have been newly released that I just haven't had a chance to really test drive a lot yet. Case in point, the new um, Itch to Stitch Galicia. I had to think about how to pronounce that name, um, top, I think is going to be in this list. That was yesterday's video. That was, pattern was just released yesterday. Um, but I just haven't, I just got it. I've just finished making it, gosh, last weekend. So I haven't had a chance to really wear it and test it out. Although I think it's going to be a good one. So these are all patterns that I have 
worn a ton. Um, I'll put up pictures of them as I'm talking about them, or my daughter has worn a ton. Um, and these are also ones that I tend to reach for more often. So there's some woven top patterns that I have um, that are just a little more wow pieces that I just don't grab for as much because they're too recognizable, if that makes sense. For example, the Itch to Stitch Azores top is another one that I really, really love, but it's such a, it's like a statement top, and so I, you know, I don't pull, wear it every week, for instance. Um, so yes, this was pot patterns that I, my TNTs, ones that I like can have multiples in in my closet and it'd be fine. Um, my aesthetic is definitely classic. I go towards more classic styles. So I use a lot of like solids and um, I like a little bit simpler lines, but I still want to be current. In fact, my three style guide posts are chic, classic, and current. So I still want to have some current things in my wardrobe and not just be completely boring. But yes, those were kind of my criteria for these. So again, there's a ton of woven patterns that I really like, but these are just my top 10 because I reach for them the most and um, I wear them the most. And yeah, they're my TNTs, my tried and trues. Okay, let's get into this so I can quit babbling at you. And these are in no particular order. Um, I honestly was going through my Instagram feed and trying to see, okay, what do I pull the most? Um, and kind of thinking about it on those terms, but I mean, I don't post everything on Instagram that I'm wearing all the time, but still, it kind of gave me an idea. So these were just as I was <laughs> going through Instagram and pulling, like, oh yeah, that's a good one, and that's that'll be a good one. So they're in no particular order. All right, first up, the Love Notions Rhapsody blouse. Guys, I love this top pattern. Um, I'm only going to show you a couple because I've, I've made a ton. Now, the ones that I'm showing you are actually the only th three Rhapsody tops that are still in my wardrobe. I've actually hacked this pattern into a knit dress as well. I have two of those that are also in my wardrobe. Um, but the other ones I had, I either gave away because of the color or because um, I had my colors done after I'd made it and I gifted one to my cousin. Um, another one, it shrunk horribly. It got dried and it was rayon and it shrunk horribly in the wash and I just couldn't, unfortunately, the dark, it was a dark green one and it was beautiful. It was in a batik rayon, um, but it accidentally got ruined. So <laughs> it was a, a washing machine boo-boo on my part. I have no one to blame but myself. But the red silk one, the um, rayon twill one, and the um, uh, apricot, I guess you would call it, um, linen one are all still in my wardrobe and being worn a ton. And I'm getting ready to make another one um, for my wardrobe and I'm gonna hack it just a little bit to look um, a little bit more like a, I think it was a Bowden top. I could be wrong though. Maybe it was a different brand. Anyway, getting ready to hack one. And it is just a lovely pattern. It comes in their full size range, um, which I think, what is their top bust number? Is it 62 inches for their top bust number? So it goes from like a 32 bust or something. I don't know, I'm not for sure. <laughs> it's their full size range and it also has the full bust option. So I make a size medium and do the full bust option on this top. I've, yeah. I need to make some more for this summer with like shorter sleeves too, just for fun. It's a great top. And I need to make some with ties. Kira from Island Socialist did some really cool tassel ties on one once, and it was phenomenal, and I want to recreate that, <laughs> make my own. Anyway, that would be top number one for woven tops. I, I love that pattern. Yeah, that's definitely one of my fav top favorite Love Notions patterns, if not the top Love Notions pattern. <laughs> I have a lot that I really love, though. And there's some more on this list. Okay, number two, the Liesl & Co. Classic Shirt. Now, before sewing, I could never buy a button-up shirt, a collared button-up tailored shirt that would fit me. Because in order for it to fit my bust, the shoulders would be way off, um, my arms, and it would look sloppy and make me look 20 pounds heavier and just not good. But if I had it where it fit me everywhere else, there was no way that baby was buttoning across my bust. So that was just my life and I was never able to buy ready to wear button up shirts. Now when I learned to sew and when I learned to make my first button up shirt, all the heavens opened. It was like wonderful. Cause again, I'm a classic aesthetic. I love a button up shirt. Love it. There's so many ways that I could wear it. I know that not all aesthetics need a button up shirt in their wardrobe, but mine does. <laughs> so when I was, when that opened up to me, when I first started sewing garments, 
it was like the dam has been broken and you know all the button-up shirt patterns so the Liesl & Co classic shirt is my probably the first button-up shirt pattern where I was didn't have to do any adjustments um, that's another thing you're gonna notice that I have a lot of the companies that I've chosen are ones that have cup sizes just and the reason that they made the list is because I always have to do a full bust adjustment so if I don't have to do that for because they have the cup sizes that shoots them up my list because it's one less thing I have to do although I do have two um, big four patterns at the bottom so that I just had to add but anyway the closet the Liesl & Co classic shirt is one of my favorite button-up shirts however I am very tempted to purchase the new cashmere Vernon shirt it is very cute and has those cool lantern sleeves oh I don't know if I can, I mean, how many button-up shirt patterns does one person need? But on the other hand, God, it looks good. So we'll, we'll see. And I love cashmere patterns. So far I've held off, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to be strong for much longer. Um, but I make the size 10 with the D cup for myself. And then I make the size two with the C cup for my daughter. She also needs full bust adjustments on not everything, but on quite a few things. Love this shirt pattern. I've changed the side seam just a little bit because I don't like the way she stops the sewing of the side seam and how it goes into the, um, how she finishes off her hem. Um, so I've just straightened that out so that I can finish off the hem with a piece of bias tape like a, like I prefer doing. Um, but other than that, I sew as is. It's a great, it's a great pattern. Okay, next is the Closet Core um, Patterns Chiello Top. I had a complete love affair with this pattern last spring. Or was it the spring before? I think it was, uh, never mind. I tell you, the pandemic, it just really, it's like a time warp. It was like a black hole. Um, I think it was the spring though of 2020. Um, I made the dress and then did some alterations, did a petite adjustment on it. And then it fit me like a glove and I ended up making three tops and another dress. Um, all of which are still in my wardrobe, but I can only find a picture of this one for some reason that was by itself. But anyway, I have made this, um, two, I love the good crop shirts. It's just like a boxy cropped and by cropped, I mean like high hip, like not really cropped. I don't do like really, really cropped, but just kind of, and I think maybe, did I lengthen this? I can't remember now, but I wear them all the time. It's just a good top to wear in the summer because it's loose fitting. It's boxy. Um, the, I've got two in linen and then I have one that's kind of in this knit lace fabric that's kind of cool. I'm not sure how I feel about the sleeves on that one, although it's still in my wardrobe. Um, and I have a, 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 actually the camisole that went underneath that no longer fits me. But um, I just made another one that I think would match just well underneath there that does fit me. Uh, but anyway, it is a great, it's a great pattern. <laughs> and once I got those fitting adjustments made, it was like, yes. That one did not have full bust. Um, I don't think. I don't think it did. Um, and I don't know if I had to do a full bust adjustment on it. I can't remember now, but I did do a petite adjustment on it. Um, okay, next is the Itch to Stitch Bond shirt. This is another button up shirt with just a collar stand. I just love this top. I wear it a ton. It's kind of, it's more fitted than like the classic shirt is, the um, Lisa & Co classic shirt. I mean, not super fitted, but it's just a little bit more tailored. And I also have a short neck. So not having a collar is not the worst thing in the world for my neck. <laughs> and I love a good collar band. And I also made my version out of a silk twill for my stash that I inherited from my sewing mentor, Joyce. And it's so it's a white silk button up shirt. It's just really good. <laughs> and um, the pattern is great. I mean, all itch to stitch patterns are just her instructions, her drafting, everything is spot on. I made the size eight with the D cup in this, which is what I make in all of her patterns. And um, yeah, I would definitely make more. It's it's really good. It'd be really good in more of like a cotton lawn or a, a linen even. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in a drapey fabric. So yeah, it's a really, really good one. Okay, next is another, let's see, I've got two Love Notions patterns next. The first one is the Love Notions Ballad Blouse. This one's a fairly new one. I think this one came out last spring, maybe. It was, I think, right before I became an ambassador. And um, it features the really cool smocking at the yoke or just gathers. I just think, I've made one of these, and I made it in a rayon crepe that is in one of my colors, and I wore it all the time this summer. 
in a rayon crepe, in some kind of a rayon, in a floaty fabric of some sort, um, or silk, I guess, but rayon just has a weight to it. It is the most effortless top that looks so put together when you put it on, and it just feels like you're wearing nothing. I love this top. It also comes with a full bust front, um, so I made the, I think this one's like a, the alphanumerical as well. I think I made it a medium with a full bust is what I make in all of Notion's pa patterns, if they're the alphanumeric. I have to think about it when it's actually, they don't have many patterns that are like numbered sizes. Um, but yes, the, I, I love it. And I don't even have to undo the buttons to take it on and off. It just slides over the body, but I think it's so flattering just because it drapes. In all reality, because of my curves and my bust, I should probably wear drapey fabrics that kind of float over my curves more often than not. Um, but I do like cottons and things with more body. But when I do pull out a good rayon viscose, it's just really good. Um, and that's how I feel about this top. Okay, next up is the Love Notions Harmony Blouse. This one is just a basic woven t-shirt. And I did not realize how badly I needed a basic woven t-shirt in my wardrobe until I made this and it was, uh, this is one of my favorite shirts. Mostly, it's mostly the fabric because the fabric is like all of my colors in it. <laughs> I love the fabric of this shirt, but um, it also, it just fits really well. It glides over things. There's a whole bunch of sleeve options that go with this pattern. And I've also made it sleeveless in a rayon um, crepe as well that um, is striped and I have some shorts that go with it and it's just really, really cute. <laughs> cute little set or you can wear them separately. Um, but yeah, that's a it's a really good pattern and just basic. I just love a good basic pattern that I can put beautiful fabric with and then it really elevates it. But that's also my style, so. Um, okay, Itch to Stitch Seychelles Top. This is one where I'm getting a little bit more current with the details. Although I'd say the ballad blouse with the shearing, shearing at the um, yoke, that was that's the more nod towards the current, you know, details. But the Seychelles Top definitely has these really cool pleated sleeves. I shy away from doing things at my shoulders because I am a rectangle with a large bust. And so that means I can almost go inverted triangle a little bit just because visually my bust is so much, technically measurement wise, my bust and my hips are the same measurement. However, <laughs> most of my hip measurement is in my butt. <laughs> it's my hips don't go out, they're pretty straight, but I go out behind me and then in the front visually it's my bust is large so I can get the illusion of being kind of an inverted triangle so putting a lot of details on my shoulders can make me look like a linebacker if I'm not careful but I do really love this top and I think it's just settled enough she has cut the shoulders in just a little bit so that it doesn't it doesn't get away from you and so this is my nod to the statement sleeve I mean my daughter loves a good statement sleeve but we're not the same body type um, so this is my nod to the statement sleeve. I have the one that is in the linen, the orange linen, and I need more. I need more this summer, I think. Um, I need to make another one. Just so I can have two in my, in my, maybe a print. Maybe I need one in a print. And maybe, yeah, maybe I'll try a drapier fabric. I wonder what that would look like with the sleeve detail too, because my current one is in linen. All right, next up, this is one actually that I've made for my daughter, I've not made for myself, but it is such a good pattern and so many options, I had to include it, and that is the Liberty Boho Blouse. I've said it before, I do realize that this is a reprint of a retired Vogue pattern. A lot of people were up in arms on that one, but I don't have the retired Vogue pattern, and now that it's retired, it costs just as much to buy that Vogue pattern on Etsy or wherever as it did to buy the Liberty um, pattern, so I went ahead and bought the Liberty one. And um, it's just got a lot of really great details. I've made um, this one for my daughter in her uh, The Lady McElroy Cobra Corsage fabric. So it's got the snakes and bugs on it that she loves. Um, but it's beautiful done up in a cotton lawn. It's got a hidden, hidden button placket, of which I've at, um, been asked for a tutorial on how to sew a hidden button placket. Totally will do that. Stay tuned. <laughs> um, you can make it with just the collar band or there's a couple of different collar options you can put on there. Um, there's some different sleeve options, although she loves the ruffled sleeve or the big sleeve. And to be honest, this would be such an easy hack for any pattern really. So it is a regular sleeve up to like right here. So just a regular straight sleeve. So if you had a pattern with a straight sleeve pattern, it cuts there and then it's a gigantic rectangle of fabric 
and then the cuff. And you just gather the gigantic rectangle of fabric into the sleeve that where you've cut it and then down into the into the cuff. That's all it is. <laughs> um, so, but she really loves that top. And again, I think we're going to have a lot more made. The bust shaping in that one is in gathers that are up here um, kind of at the shoulder seam. So there are no darts, but again, it's loose enough that she can get away without having to have a full bust um, adjustment. If I were making it for myself, which I doubt I will, well, I don't know, maybe. I've traced off her size, so I still have the size for myself, but um, I would do a full bust adjustment and then just rotate the dart up into more gathers um, up at the um, shoulder seam, but it's a great pattern. And now I have two um, big four patterns. Now I've had to do work to both of these because again, they don't, not, neither of these came with the um, cup sizes, although some big four patterns do come with cup sizes and I think I own them all because I buy them almost immediately. I love a good cup size pattern because um, it's one less step I have to do and usually they fit me so much better. That's like my biggest um, fitting issue on my upper half. If I can get it to fit my bust and sew the size that fits me everywhere else, I'm usually golden. Um, anyway, <laughs> the first one is Vogue 8772. I did a one pattern three ways um, video series. Was that last year or the year before? I can't remember, but I've made three of this and I've done all the work for it. Um, and I'm trying to remember. I know I've shortened the sleeves, which actually I don't know that I needed to. Um, I sewed the side, size 14. I've done a full bust adjustment. I think a three inch full bust adjustment. So an inch and a half on each side. Um... Yeah, but it's just a nice, it's got fisheye darts in the back. I think it has it in the front too. I just omit those. I hardly, I don't hardly ever sew fisheye darts in the front, like waist darts in the front, just because the way my body is shaped. But um, I made kind of the straight pattern in a uh, denim chambray shirting that I wear all the time. And then I made a silk one where I hacked the sleeves just to be a little bit more fuller that I gathered into the cuffs. Um, I actually have not worn that. I should have pulled that out. Um, cause it's got the, the bow, the pussy bow blow or pussy bow on the um, front. So just a little bit more of an upscale and it's in a beautiful crepe de chine, silk crepe de chine. Um, it's in my closet. I just haven't pulled that out in a, a little bit. Uh, and then I also hacked the pattern to become a shacket, which I made out of a rayon jacquard. Um, I did wear that a ton this winter. <laughs> I pulled that out. So, um, yes, I big fan of that pattern, but I've also done all the fitting work on it to where it fits me really well. So you know, there's that to be said. Um, and then finally is Simplicity 1538. And I included this one because I was very impressed with all of the um, little details that they had in the pattern. So they had a whole bunch of tips in that pattern on how to add like a grosgrain ribbon to the button band. Um, you know, if you want to put a little ruffle or just a lot of ideas for ways that you could really make a button down or button up shirt your own. Um, I was just very impressed with that. So I did do a uh, three inch full bust adjustment on that pattern. I think that's it though. I mean, I did some shortening, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm shortening the sleeves a little bit. Although maybe not. Cause I did the sleeve that um, where it gathers into the cuff into a thinner cuff, but I made that out of a silk crepe de chine and it is phenomenal. I love that shirt. I get compliments on it. I mean, I've only worn it a couple of times cause I, I made it not that long ago. Um, like three or four, but I've gotten compliments on it every single time. So I had to include it <laughs> because it is one that I'll be wearing a lot more um, this spring and summer. Uh, because again, for my color palette I'm working in the spring, I've got red, my warm red in there, but it, I'm also going to cheat with a little bit of bright orange as well because my red kind of goes, this is actually a little cool, this red's a little cooler than I should be wearing, but um, my warm red goes into orange really well. So that you're going to see that blouse probably quite frequently this as the weather warms up. It's really cold and wet right now, but um, yeah, there we have it. Now, again, there are a lot of button up shirt patterns there, but yeah, that is just what I really enjoy wearing. And when the world of sewing and fitting opened up to me and all of a sudden I could wear these styles I'd never been able to wear before. Again, it was like the heavens opened and angels were singing. <laughs> so so I had to include my favorite ones. And yeah, these are, these are my top 10 current favorite woven top patterns. And so yeah, wanted to be very truthful on that. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it wasn't a sew the look, but that will be coming. Um, Sunday is the last of the Ziggy sew along. 
next week I'm going to do a stripe matching tutorial. Um, I think I <laughs> confused you all when I was talking about the placket, um, doing the placket tutorial. I actually already have a continue, like how to sew a continuous lap placket and how to sew a tower placket on the channel. Um, it's under the tutorials playlist on the channel. Um, I was just going to show you how I adapt the pattern if it doesn't include a spot to put a placket. If it has you just kind of putting a faux placket kind of like in the seam, I changed that. And that's kind of what I was meaning. I was going to show you the pattern work for how I did that because I already have tutorials on how to sew both a continuous lap and a tower placket on the channel. So, and I will do that. I will do a video where I show you how I do that on the pattern and then I can send you back over to those two videos because that's still how I sew both my continuous lap plackets and tower plackets um, are from those tutorials that I did uh, one or two years ago now. Anyway, so I'm gonna do stripe matching next week. And then we're going to delve into the Ish to Stitch Upland Trousers. Um, I'm gonna start filming that tomorrow actually, so uh, so that on Tuesday you guys can see my Distachify makes, because uh, the fabric I'm using for that is one of my Distachify fabrics from February. And then I'm gonna show you my March picks, what I grabbed for March, and tell you the plans for those. So that'll be Tuesday's video. And then what else do we have? Then we've got um, So Frugal. I'm, be, I'm participating in the So Frugal 2022. That will all come up on March 31st, which is actually a Thursday, so that's when all the pictures need to pop up on Instagram. But I'll do a video on what I made the following day on Friday the 1st. So um, I'll enter the contest on Thursday and put everything on, on Instagram like I'm supposed to, and then I'll show you guys on the channel in a little bit more detail on Friday the 1st. So those are the plans going forward. <laughs> Okay, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Have a good weekend. I hope you get some sewing in. Bye.